One of the problems we have is translating our basic research to clinically relevant measurements and understanding in our patients. The multiplex allowed us to measure a number of proteins on a single sample easily and effectively. We were able to apply that approach to patients at risk for developing heart failure secondary to high blood pressure. We picked up and identified that specific signature and we've now moved that forward and show that that can indeed be uh, predictive of patients um, at risk for heart failure. And so there is a perfect example of bench to bedside um, translational research. During medical school, um, as a first year medical student, we uh, had many rotations where we would begin to um, expose ourselves to patients and their families. And I had the, uh, the fortune, as well as um, the misfortune, of being with a family who lost um, their small infant to congenital heart disease. And I, re I realized at that time that there's another dimension and another driving force to research that has nothing to do with papers and grants and how many assays, but the fact is that you can make a discovery that can change the course of medical care and actually change the life of patients and their families. Leukemic cells don't live in isolation. Uh, they're interacting with their environment within the bone marrow. They're interacting with their environment in terms of the blood that flows by them. And so we were interested to see how the cytokines and chemokines that they might be getting exposed to in uh, the environment that they're living in, how those might be affecting the protein expression. And so that led into this research. We wanted to profile cytokines and chemokines as well. Um, and we had an idea that we might find that there were different patterns or signatures of these within leukemic cells. There's one thing we know for sure in cardiovascular medicine today, and that is there is no single biomarker that is going to be the answer. Um, the, the thing that we're doing now is actually measuring um, markers early in the disease process and hope that we can pick up a signature that would actually um, identify patients that may be at more risk that we should intervene more aggressively earlier and then other patients we should just leave alone. There are our ELISA kits so you could look at these things individually one at a time or by kits. It requires a lot more material uh, and we felt that we would have bigger problems with batch effects um, and so we were looking for something where we could analyze lots of cytokines and chemokines simultaneously um, that also wouldn't require too much material uh, so that we could see if we could see these patterns. As a laboratory manager, the most valuable thing to me is technician time. It can also be the most costly thing. The old ELISA system used to require four to six hours in order to complete a reading or analyzing one analyte. Now with the BioPlex system, it allows us to read up to 20 different analytes within that time span. If you're studying heart disease in an infant that weighs a pound and a half, um, you know, there's just so much blood volume that you can take. I mean, we went from 100 microliters of plasma for one analyte down to 10 microliters of plasma that would allow us to measure over 22 different analytes. And so sample volumes, amounts, become a very critical issue um, when you're dealing with um, clinical measurements. But about that time we saw that uh, BioRad was making these large cytokine kits where you could look at numerous cytokines and chemokines simultaneously and that fit with what we needed. The, the BioRad multiplex system has allowed us and afforded us to take a teardrop of, of blood, if you will, and measure a number of critical um, uh, analytes that are relevant to our, our interest. And so this system, because of the fact that it allows multiple measurements on the same sample, um, really affords us the first time um, to do something we've never been able to do before, which is to serially measure uh, changes in inflammatory cascades, not just at one point, 
but at multiple time points in the course of um, heart disease, in the course following heart surgery, and really put a time map, if you will, on how things change um, in the operating room, in the intensive care unit, and beyond. One of our hopes is that using this multiplex system, we're going to identify a very specific cassette of proteins that emerge in heart disease. In fact, we have taken that one step further and actually have identified um, that there is a specific cassette of these proteins we identified using the BioRad Multiplex that we can use for a diagnostic test. So the first thing I guess that we found was that cytokine and chemokine expression was markedly different in leukemias than it is in normals. The second thing that we found was that there were different patterns if you did principal component analysis on the data set, the patients would separate into eight different groups. From that, we went on to look and see how those cytokines or those signatures were associated with different clinical features like cytogenetics or outcome, uh, whether they correlated with remission duration. But we were surprised to see that uh, the cytokine and chemokine profiles actually were prognostic on their own. And that sort of sets up the idea going forward, you know, whether you could take the information that we get from the chemokine and the cytokine patterns and use that to use different therapies that would interfere with those loops um, and thereby affect leukemic cell growth or the resistance of those leukemic cells to different chemotherapies that we use. Knowing a prognosis has some value to a patient, far better if you can use that to somehow change the therapy that you're going to use so that you don't put them on something that's ineffective when if you had just known what the right thing was to use, you can put them on something that is effective. Every day that we lose in research because the assay didn't work, we have to go back and repeat it, is another day that someone has been lost to cardiovascular disease. So there's another heavy cost to our failure of being able to effectively perform research. And that is the toll of um, patients' lives. And that is also another fact in our lab that is um, with us every day as we, we move forward with our research.